Laser sights are an essential firearms training tool, clearly correcting and improving the two most important shooting fundamentals, aiming and trigger control. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. Welcome to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, where a right is always a right, not a privilege. Hey, welcome back to Gun Talk. Tom Gresham here. If you'd like to join us, 866-TALK-GUN or Tom Talk Gun. That'll get you in here. We talk about shooting a lot. We talk about guns and cool guns and new ammo and all the rest of the stuff. And you know from listening through the years, I'm a big believer. And hey, people, they ask me, well, hey, can I buy a new gun? I'd like to buy a new gun. What do you think? Of course you can buy a new gun. I'm encouraged to buy a new gun. And whether it's for hunting or recreational shooting or whatever, that's all fine. A lot of people have kind of figured out the whole self-defense deal. They're getting into that. They've got concealed carrier. They've got a gun for home protection. And, you know, I talk about training because having the device is not enough. In fact, sometimes it may even be counterproductive if you actually don't know what you're doing with it. So I encourage you to get training. But more than that, and I talk about this a fair amount, it's not about learning to gunfight. It's about overall, we're trying to help you be safe. We're trying to help you take care of your family and yourself in whatever situation comes up. I mean, that's kind of the the bottom line is whatever happens, do you have the wherewithal from wherever you get that to deal with it? It's a kind of an overarching, I will take care of myself. I will try to be self-sufficient concept, mindset, credo, if you will, And I've been encouraging that for a lot of years. Well, it is a real pleasure to bring on somebody who actually has done that professionally for so very long. Jeff Kirkham from Ready Man, uh, almost 29 years as a Green Beret, a lot of classified stuff, a lot of uh, training and everything from jumping out of airplanes to diving and it's crazy stuff. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. You bet. You, you, You do realize that jumping out of a perfectly good airplane is not a good idea, right? Well, it depends on what the situation is. When you got a uh, when you got a jump master yelling at you, sometimes it's safer to get out and stand. <laughs> well, that's first probably true. Uh, I mean, your background is is wide. It's varied. It's you know everything from survival training, firearms training, uh, exercise, trail running, uh, all the rest of it. The stuff you guys do, and then you form this uh, Ready Man. First, I guess tell people what Ready Man is. Ready Man is uh, survival training as well as, as tools, and so we have a line of of items that we've developed that we put together and on uh, on our Ready Man site, as well as we've got close to a thousand tutorial videos now that um, try to help people get prepared in case of disaster or calamity. And this is not just like uh, attacks at an ATM. It's as you know. Like we were, I was talking with uh, Dave Spalding before you came on, he was talking about, you know, do you know what to do if your car rolls over and it's in the water and the water's coming in, that kind of thing. Absolutely. And what and what we try to focus on or what we try to tell folks is that we're, we're interested in probability of threat. And so, you know, whatever that probability of threat, if you're in Florida, the probability of threat's probably a hurricane. Um, if you're in California, the probability of threat may be an earthquake or, mm-hmm. or wildfire. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you live in dangerous areas, then maybe the probability of threat is like a mugging or, or an assault against your person. And so that's that's where we try to get people to focus on whatever that probability is first so they're ready, and then they can do the follow after that. Are there basics that cut across all of those things, things that people should either do or know? A- a- absolutely. And I, I like to call those like the three pillars of preparedness where you've got your, your physical preparedness, so you've got your, your fitness, your health and sanitation. You've got your um, psychological preparedness, where it's the resilience of you building your community and being able to lean on each other, and then your emotional preparedness of how you interact with your family and how you lessen the load of stress off of your shoulders. And so those three things together, I mean, it's a longer discussion, but those three things bound together mm-hmm. are really the foundation that lead to everything else. None of this is short and simple where you say, okay, if you give me 15 minutes, I'm going to tell you the whole deal. It really is 
to some extent, a change in your lifestyle and what you think is important, isn't it? Well, a- absolutely. And I think everybody at their root is is looking at it the same way, because what's important to everybody is their family, you know. And so ultimately, when you're getting prepared for whatever the disaster or calamity might be, whether that's a hurricane all the way up to, you know, think you think that there's going to be issues with the government, first and foremost, um, overwhelmingly, people's concerns are their family and making sure them, themselves are ready there to help protect their family, whether that's a financial issue at home because mom and dad got in a wreck or got sick, all the way up to a, a disaster like flooding, and then making sure that the family can be provided for. And with that is the passing on of that knowledge so that even your wife and your kids or your husband and your kids are assets and not liabilities. Let me ask you, I'm mean, flipping around here, though. I'm seeing in your bio, you invented the uh, the rat's tourniquet. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah, I, I invented the rat's tourniquet some years ago because I was looking for a solution that worked under under the highest stress conditions. The tourniquet that we were being issued at the time was difficult to use in the dark, under stress, hmm. you know, what I like to call scared in the dark. And so... Right. Because of that, I ran down the whole rabbit hole of trying to come up with a better mousetrap, and my better mousetrap is the rat's tourniquet. It's the premier tourniquet for for kids as well as for canines, and it also, I was teaching illiterate Afghans how to use it in like literally about three minutes, and then they had it. For those who have not given it any thought, what's what's the benefit of or why should someone First of all, have a tourniquet. Secondly, know how to use it. And thirdly, and most importantly, why should a person carry a tourniquet? That, that's a great questions. The most preventable cause of death, so preventable cause of death on the battlefield as well as domestically here in the United States, is massive hemorrhage or bleeding to death. Hmm. So when we start talking, and it's not just gunshot wounds, I'm constantly amazed at the number of people that we get that call or email me to let me know that they've used my tourniquet to save their life. Everything from having accidents through pane glass windows to Mm. chainsaws to circular saws, of course, gunshot wounds. We even had one of a guy that was, uh, was hit with a forklift. And they Jeez. used one of my tourniquets to save his life. So, you know, and, and not to mention car wrecks with compound fractures and on and on and on. And so there's a massive number of people whose lives have been saved now because police who are typically first responders or good citizens who are even more um, first responders have begun using tourniquets. And tourniquets are very safe. The U.S. military did a 10-year study where not one instance, 10-year study, thousands of uses of tourniquet, not one instance of a case where, you know, there was an amputation because of the tourniquet. They're very safe. There's a lot and, of and, old urban myths about them. And, and for those whose last uh, first aid class was a Boy Scout uh, manual many years ago, a belt is not a tourniquet these days. No, it's not. Actually, one of my patents is a tourniquet that is built into a belt, but the belt itself is actually pretty difficult to use um, as a tourniquet. Not impossible Mm -hmm. with proper training, but I would argue like your demographic that's listening Mm -hmm. that is probably concealed carry, if you have a stiff leather belt, Boy, it's it's nigh unto impossible to get that yeah, thing to work. Yeah, if you're wearing a gun belt, it's not going to work as your tourniquet. And the other thing is, a tourniquet like the rat's tourniquet, they're small and they're light, and you really can carry it. I mean, how do you suggest a person who says, okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm going to do it, how do you carry them? You know, the best way I could say is go to our Instagram page, which is rat's tourniquet, and and check out because I, I get a plethora of pictures from people. There's literally a, an unlimited number of ways that folks out there are carrying the rat's tourniquet because oh. it is so small and compact. Everything from, you know, bundling it up and putting it into their pocket to using it in a spare magazine um, holster and, and or running, a, running it down their leg with just the metal portion, the cleat sticking out above their belt. Okay, sure. Um, some guys wrap it around their waist. I mean, there's, there's. Uh, I'm constantly amazed with the new and innovative ways that that people have come out of ways to store or you or to uh, carry them. 
I'm just going to say, for those who, I can't go into all this stuff. I'm looking at your website. You have the most incredible and truly unique, in the real sense of that word, products that you guys have created in your wilderness survival card, your medical cards. These are stuff that can go in in an Altoids can or in your wallet or in your pocket. And I mean, it's crazy stuff you guys have come up with, and I guess just comes out of your your background. Yes, sir. That's that's correct. I, when we started with the cards, we wanted something that was essentially a survival kit that could fit in your back pocket, and so mm-hmm. that's when the wilderness survival card um, kind of had its birth, and and then we've just continued to to expand from there. It's truly interesting and fascinating stuff. I mean, it's, and the other part of it is it's not enough to get the device. You also have to know how to use it. And that's where your videos come in, right? Yes, sir. That's correct. It's You're absolutely right. You have to have tools and knowledge. And those two things together equal success in a survival or a high-stress situation. Fascinating stuff, Jeff. I'm out of time. I want to get you back on again, uh, and we can talk about this in more detail. But I'm going to direct people right now, readyman.com. It's just readyman. Dot com. You can go from there and, and find all the rest of the stuff. Thank you so much for what you're doing and making all this information and knowledge available to us. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right. You take care. Jeff Kirkman from Ready Man. Yeah, check that out. I mean, you're not going to believe it. This is some crazy stuff. I mean, really good stuff that uh, you could actually keep in your back pocket or in a wallet. Uh, ReadyMan.com. All right. Now we're open lines. 866-TALK-GUN. Is this just prepping, or is this actually a good idea? What's your take? Hey, this is Marty Daniel of Daniel Defense. For years, we've been bringing the highest quality ARs to our consumers at a great value. Now we're doing that same thing again with our Delta 5 bolt action rifle. It combines the accuracy and durability we're known for with the modularity of our AR platform. And it comes with the features the best shooters will want right out of the box. Visit DanielDefense.com to learn more. Isn't it time you got a Daniel? This is Jeff with Black Hills Ammunition. Our new rifle ammunition line featuring Hornady's extreme low drag bullet design is a big step forward in long distance performance. When you want the ability to shoot way out there with accuracy, flat trajectory, and minimal wind effect, our ELD ammunition is the right choice. The high ballistic coefficients and Black Hills Ammunition carry manufacturer gives you the advantage. Black Hills Ammunition, the power of performance. Want great deals on guns, ammunition, and gear? Download the free Gundelio app today. With Gundelio, you can search for deals, listen to the Gun Talk podcast, watch gun videos, read gun news, and get notifications right to your phone about deals and special offers. Save money on the products you want from the companies you love. New deals, discounts, and rebates added daily. Gundelio, available for free in the App Store and Google Play. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. The new FN 509 midsize 9mm pistol is now part of FN's legendary concealed carry lineup, and it is a natural fit. With its smaller grip frame modeled after the battle-proven million rounds tested FN 509, the FN 509 midsize comes with two 15-round magazines and naturally improves concealability. Available at your local firearms dealer. FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. This is interesting. Um, Story out of Florida. Already leading the nation with the highest number of concealed weapon permits, Florida is nearing a new threshold, granting authority to 2 million people who can lawfully carry guns. Of course, the AP story says, 
lawfully carry guns tucked into waistbands, under jackets or inside purses, into restaurants, shopping malls, and elsewhere. Well, come on, give me a break. Uh, Two million people with carry permits in Florida. Florida is one of the very first. Remember when they started doing this, what, 25 plus years ago? They, They made... The media made fun of Florida. They said, well, instead of being the sunshine state, it was going to be the gunshine state. It really was where we got the prototypical media coverage of blood will run in the streets, every fender bender will result in you know, a shooting, yada, 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 yada. And then as we went state by state by state across the entire United States, and people proposed concealed carry permits in various states because we didn't have them, we heard the same thing. Blood will run in the streets. Every fender bender car accident will result in a shootout. People will shoot each other over parking places, yada, yada, yada. And each time the people sometimes had to go to the legislature five, six times. Sometimes they had to, in the case of uh, Texas, fire the governor, Ann Richards, so they could get this thing passed and get it signed into law. And it would get passed, it would get signed into law, and people would start getting their permits by the tens of thousands, maybe by the hundreds of thousands. In some cases, obviously by the millions and the blood didn't run in the streets and the fender benders did not result in shootouts and good people were still good people. Weird, huh? Interesting. Hey, let's go to line one. Matt's with us out of uh, somewhere in Texas. Hey, Matt, you're on gun talk. What's up? Well, I've got a question for you and I'm hoping you can help me and a friend out. I've got a friend that I've met here recently and he was born with a, a birth defect in his right hand, and his four fingers are short. His thumb is the regular size, and he's right-eyed dominant. Um, he's taught himself to write and everything left-handed, but we're having a heck of a time sighting a rifle in for him, uh, using his left eye and left hand to pull the trigger. I didn't know if you had any insight yeah. as to what we could do. Okay, so we're shooting a rifle. And he needs to shoot it with his left hand, but he's right eye dominant. How did I do? Am I up to date so far? Correct. Okay. Is what what type of rifle and what kind of sight? We're we talking iron sights or scope? Uh, no, sir. Scope. Uh, he's got a six hour whiskey three uh, scope okay. and uh, twenty five out six. And nice. we've been nice. trying to hunt coyotes. This is going to be really easy. Close the right eye. Okay. I mean, seriously, if he's going to, if he has to shoot from the left shoulder, do not try to use the right eye. Do not try to do that. It's going to be a mess. Just at the time when you need to shoot, just close the right eye. And yes, it's better. People say, well, you ought to keep both eyes open. Yes, that's better if you can. But if you can't, you do what you got to do. I would just say, just close the right eye and sight through the scope. And it's going to work just fine. Okay. All right. Awesome. Good deal. All right. I thanks. Greatly appreciate it. All right. Take care. Beryl's with us on line three out of Springfield, Missouri. Beryl, what you find here? What's going on? Uh, listen to you, and uh, I heard you talking about the Mossberg pistol. Uh huh. And uh, went online and didn't find out much there, except it's uh, nine millimeter. Right. Uh, but uh, we couldn't find any place like where they sold them or the ah, price of them. Or I got you. Okay, here's the deal. It's a, it's a new gun, and there probably are still a lot of uh, gun stores that don't have it yet. Uh, yep. I think MSRP on it is about four and a quarter, about 425 Probably be sold in the uh, 350 range and just kind of taking a wag at this thing. Um but if you want to see one, I would suggest don't drive around because that's going to burn up your gas. Call around and find somebody who has one, a, a gun store. But you may have to call around a bit. I mean, it's an interesting, it's a nice pistol. It's another mid, mid-sized mid to small-ish 9 millimeter pistol. There are a ton of them now, of course. Uh, I think this is a good one. I, I guess, let me ask you a question. Do you have a particular interest in this pistol? Are you like a Mossberg fan, or, or what is it that's motivating you? Uh, I have uh, maybe one other 9 millimeter, let's say. Okay. And 
I heard you talking about it. You said it was a, a good gun. You shot it at uh, range one day. Yep. And uh, so I thought, well, I'd, I'd check into it. Okay. If you liked it. <laughs> you know? All right, all right. I'm up to speed then. I think what you need to do is uh, don't be in a hurry. Find somebody that has one and go take a look at it. If you get a chance, if they have a shooting range, uh, rent one if they'll rent it and let you shoot it. But at least get your hands on it. If you have more than one gun now, you're going to know immediately. You're going to pick it up and go, yep, like it, or nope, don't. And that's okay. That That's as good a criteria as any, honestly. Uh, but it may take a little while for them to hit the store shelves, so... Be patient, but in the meantime, just keep calling around. Hey, Bear, I, I got to run here. I got them lined up. I thank you for your call. Uh, line five, Alex with us out of Tacoma, Washington, with a range report. Alex, what uh, what are you reporting here? Well, I got a couple. I got a Ruger five shot single action revolver from the 454 Casual. It was, uh, you really know you're shooting something when you pull the trigger on that baby. Did you buy it new or used? I bought it new. Okay. Tell me about so that some, process. Uh, Why? Why'd you do that? I didn't have one. <laughs> I love it. That's that's great. I didn't have so one. Was, uh, <laughs> oh, it was a lot of fun, but I bought some uh, Hornady uh, Vortex rounds and some Grizzly 310 grain. Um, you know, I wanted to buy some hot stuff, so I'd really get it to try right, it out. Right, right, right. And I was... I was disappointed in the Grizzly because the bullet comes out uh, by the time you fire the second shot. It jams oh, okay, the yeah. That, what's happening is they're sliding forward under the the, the 454 Casual is a big recoil gun. It really is. Tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I almost never do this, but I'm going to ask you: Would you hold on because I I want to get more about this uh, gun and what you're shooting it in it and what's going on with it? We're going to ask Alec to hold while we go to this break here. We'll come back and finish out his range report because he said he has two of them. Actually, we're looking for your range report as well. If you've got a, something you're shooting or something you're thinking about buying, by all means, call us. We'll just knock it around. 866-TALK-GUN. We're also, we're going to be talking about bear guns when we come back. Do you have one? Do you want one? Of course you do. 866-TALK-GUN. This is Milo Lardbottom. Junior Under Assistant Deputy to the Assistant Director of Deputy Affairs for the Department of Homeland Security with a special message for listeners of Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. We know who you are. We know where you are. You're right by your radio. We have special cameras that can see into your radio. I have a special monitor built into my aluminum foil helmet. We are watching you. So don't try anything funny, buster. Thanks, Milo. Hey, welcome back. Tom Gresham here. The number is 866-TALK-GUN. Now we're talking with Alec out of uh, Tacoma, Washington, uh, with his range reports, plural. Got a 454 Casual. So, Alec, you said you bought it just because, but you're having problems with the ammo. So talk to me. What's going on? Well, the, like I said, the Barnes, I got Barnes Vortex, mm-hmm. and they're about 1,700 feet per second. They work real fine. Okay. But the uh, Grizzly 310 grain uh, lead flat nose, not so much. You're getting bullet setback, which basically what happens is it's inertia. The bullet's so big and heavy that when you tor- touch it off, and this thing has a lot of recoil, the gun moves backward, but actually the bullet stays where it is and pulls slightly forward in the case. If that happens enough, they'll actually stick out far enough where the cylinder won't turn anymore. Oh, yeah. Tried it uh, a few times. It took two shots to get it to come out. Well, um, first of all, it's a good thing to learn that because now you're going, okay, I can't use that. That's not reliable ammo for me in a bear gun or whatever it's going to be uh, because this ammo won't stay where it is. Um, beyond that, how do you like the revolver? Oh, it's it's fun. I took my neighbor out, too, and he uh, he shot at once and said that was enough. Well, you know, and of course, I know you know this. For those who don't know, the 454 Casual is a great caliber. It has the energy it has at 100 yards is the same as a 44 Magnum has at the muzzle. So it's a real serious gun. But, and here's the cool part, very much like uh, 357 Magnum, where you can shoot 38 Special in it, you can shoot 45 Colt in your 454 Casual. And they work just the same as those Grizzlies did. Uh, 
because I well, have some. Uh, depends I, on which I, load I, you're I using. If, 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 if you if you go if you go get you some cowboy action. 45 Colt loads or little pussycat loads. They just go poof, poof. Fun to shoot. You're not going to get any bullet setback with those. Well, right. If I, unless I alternate and put some 454s in there, too. That's fine. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah, if you, yeah, yes. But, yeah, if you fill the cylinder with uh, 45 Colts, you're not going to get that. And it becomes fun to shoot in all of that. You know, there have been a lot of 454 Casual revolvers sold, used, complete with a box of ammo that has three rounds shot out of the box. Oh, I'm I'm sure, but I got the uh, the Ruger, like I said, the four and four and five eight barrel, right? And it's a five shot, uh, and it has the uh, not the regular grip. I can't remember what you call it now. The Bisley grip. Oh yeah, Bisley. Yep. I got that, and it shoots just fine. Oh, they're nice. All right, you said you had actually you had two range reports. What was the other one? Oh, the other thing I got the shotgun picked up the same day was a, a Springfield Mod Two. Uh, nine millimeters got suppressor sights and two sets of barrels, two barrels, ah. one uh, threaded and one not. Okay. Because I had a suppressor but no pistol for it, so you know right. that's why I got the pistol. I had to, I had to have something for my suppressor. <laughs> so, have you shot it with the with the can on it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was cool. God, that's so out, much uh, fun. A guy who hadn't shot since he was maybe a teenager mm-hmm. and uh, had some 147 grain uh, nine millimeter rounds that I picked up a year or so ago and. And, uh, no, it's really nice and quiet. Yeah. And that was it, lots of fun. It is fun. It really is. Very cool. Alec, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Tell you what I'm going to do, because David, we want to talk about bear guns, and he's got a question, and it's a good one. I want to take a quick break, because I'm not going to have enough time if I don't. So, David, don't go anywhere. I'm going to take a quick break, come back. We're going to talk about bear guns for your wife, what kind of options we have out there. Uh, it's a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I'd love to talk about that. Actually, if you want to talk about bear guns, if you have one, if you're thinking about buying one, give me a call. Let's talk about it. 866-TALK-GUN. Designed to be the ultimate choice in concealed carry pistols, Kimber's Striker Fired Evo SP features an innovative grip system that eliminates hardware on the grip surface, a magazine release for right or left handed shooters, all metal construction for reduced muzzle rise, and ledge night sights for single hand manipulations. Kimber's Evo SP is the ideal choice for shooters that demand a feature packed, compact size striker fired firearm. Find your Kimber at www.kimberamerica.com. Hi, this is Ryan Gresham from Gun Talk. If you like guns, you need to enter our biggest giveaway ever at guntalk.com slash win. One person will win more than $11,000 in guns, gear, and accessories to stuff your safe or hit the range. The grand prize includes a night vision scope and rangefinder from ATN, a custom 1911 from Auto Ordnance, a crossbreed holsters concealed carry pack, an FN 509 tactical pistol, the ultimate gun safe organizer pack from Gun Storage Solutions, a custom Glock 22 from Lone Wolf Distributors, clothing, range bags, and more from Proper, Remington's 870 DM and TAC 14, plus two cases of Buckshot, Stag Arms Stag 15 tactical rifle, Tandem Cross Rimfire customization kits, a Ruger Mark IV pistol, and much, much more. Go to guntalk.com slash win to enter. That's guntalk.com slash win. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. The time is now to band together. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. When someone leaves you their gun collection, you may want a few, but what do you do with the rest? How do you sell them? Who do you call? Well, I call Johnny Dury at Dury's Guns. Whether you're selling one gun or 500, they'll tell you what it's worth and write you a check. Simple, quick, easy, fair. I trust Dury's Guns. Give them a call. Dury'sGuns.com.
Hey, you're not going to believe it. Just a minute, I'll give you the details. So CNN actually calls out a gun banner for making false claims. Amazing. The world's upside down. Holy cow. Hey, David's uh, calling us out of Marshall, Arkansas, out of line two, talking about bear guns. David, talk to me. Well, sir, uh, I got a little problem here. We live up on this, you know, deep woods up here on top of this mountain, and it's just her and I, and I've got a Black Hawk 41 mag. I got another question about that in the world of moon clips or anything else I can run through that, but that is too big for her. She's small, and her hands just can't, not even going to get close to that. And uh, the only other thing we got is a 380 auto, and uh-huh. I'm kind of a revolver guy, and I was thinking maybe 357, and what, uh, maybe a Smith or something. I don't know. We're just going to have to get down and play. Well, you know, a 357 is certainly a possibility. Uh, it's all about the loads. It's about, and I really am a fan of hardcast lead bullets. They penetrate so much better. You do not want, let me repeat, you do not want an expanding load. You have to have deep penetration. And so a 357 would work, but, you know, even a full house 357 has a fair amount of recoil, you know. So I'm going to suggest one that's going to sound kind of goofy at first, but I want you to consider it. Ruger has a five-shot 44 Special. It's not a particularly big revolver. I mean, it's a you know regular size, but it's not huge. The forty four Special does not have a lot of recoil, but you can get hard cast lead bullets for it, and it will pretty much shoot through a bear, and do a great job. You know, pushing a bullet at seven or eight hundred feet per second. It's uh, kind of an easy kicking gun, and I, I take it from your choices you're throwing out, she would prefer a revolver. I would. I'm just old school. They just less chances of them. To me, it means pretty simple. You pull the hammer, you squeeze the trigger, and it goes bang. And it's, you know, not a lot there. So, is that along with like a forty-five Colt? Then uh, it's actually a little bit less powerful than a forty-five Colt, uh, but it's an awfully good one. I, you know, now if you, you like the forty-four Colt, this is the one I'm talking about. Is their GP one hundred comes in forty-four special? It's a double action, so all you have to do is pull the trigger. Don't even have to cock the hammer. I mean, you could cock it if you wanted to. Uh, but, I mean, it's a really nice revolver. I would suggest you take a look. It's called the GP100. Again, it's a five-shot, 44 Special. has a three-inch barrel. It would be easy to carry. Uh, I just think it's a really good option. Besides that, it would be fun to shoot, especially if you get some uh, those light cowboy action loads for it. She could shoot it a lot in practice and practice and get very comfortable with it. Do they make a snake shot for that also? Uh, yes, actually they do. You can get snake shot for that. Well, now that's, Dell. Well, that's where we need to be because <laughs> that's the end of you need a handgun and we got crawly critters and, you know, six, seven foot is not down out of range. So uh, I hear you. Um, so you got, you got furry, uh, varmints and you got crawly, uh, slithery varmints. Yeah. What about the 41 mag? Is there anything I can get a moon clip for without shooting the 41 mag in and drop down to something else? Hmm. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the uh, the question. You, do you have a 41 mag now? Yes, sir. I have a Ruger Blackhawk 41 mag, single action. Okay. And, and what, do you, what, do you, what do you want to do? A buddy of mine was talking about he thought I could get a moon clip and run like a 357 with a snake shot through it, and I'm thinking that's just going to wall her down the barrel. That ain't yeah, gonna no, 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 no. Uh, t- tell your buddy to put down the beer and back away. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, that, 40, that forty-one is in a world of its own. That's just that's just right there it where it's at. But it is. I like the forty-one, but you're right. It's it's its own deal. Well, look, check out that uh, GP one hundred and forty-four special. I think you're gonna like it. I listen. I got scoot. I got Lee lined up on line five, coming to me out of Eastern Washington. Hello, Lee. You have made it onto Gun Talk. What's up? Thank you, sir. Got two of them. One was regarding uh, something you mentioned. Oh, maybe. Two years ago, a fellow was up in Alaska, and he was walking his dogs out at the edge of town, and suddenly behind him was chuffing. He turned around, and there was a grizzly coming right at him, and he mm-hmm. had a console. And yes. he shot, I think, four rounds, and then it locked up. He had reloads in it, just what you're talking about. I remember that one. And he, basically, the last shot he shot as he was falling down, his bear slid right up to him. Yes. Yep. So that, that's, that's a good tie-in with what you just did. Yeah, you're but, right. 
we missed the breaks for, for your show, there's been a commercial, on, well, not a commercial, sort of a little news break, and it says on Thursday in Olympia, Washington, the Democrats just voted for something that says if there's any kind of domestic violence, an allegation, please come, they basically are supposed to take all of the guns. Not if somebody's walking on someone and they got a gun, mm -hmm. but the person who's the victim, take theirs too. Yes, they take everybody's guns, which are, let's leave everyone defenseless. This makes no sense. Now, but this is what's going on in your state. I mean, and you know the drill. You know what's going on there. It's crazy town. Yes. You know, it brings up a point, Lee. I'm just going to bounce this off of you. I don't think it sounds paranoid anymore. Originally, when I first started telling people to do this, they thought it was crazy. I think you shouldn't have all your guns at your place. I think you ought to have one or two of your guns that live at a friend's house. Just for that reason. And sadly, I think you don't talk to people who you don't know real well about it. Anything serious. I, you know, your finances, and you don't put stuff where it can get on the Internet. Now, they hack into people's computers and get their bank information. We've heard this for several years. This mm. is not new. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, they, but yeah, no, it, it's uh, it's crazy what's going on there. And um, I know the gun owners in uh, Washington State are fighting it. you got to get involved. you got to get involved with the state group and keep at it. Listen, I appreciate the call, sir. All right, two things here. Fa fascinating stuff coming out of the news. Let's see. This was on CNN on the website, believe it or not. Crazy. Uh, Kristen, or rather, Kirsten Gillibrand of New York, running for president, of course. Um, she's at a town hall meeting, and she was asked about uh, the NRA and gun control. She says, let's be really clear what the issue is. It's the NRA and its greed. She says, the NRA is largely funded by the gun manufacturers. This is one of the things that the gun banners keep throwing out all the time. The NRA is just uh, lobbying for gun makers. And I keep saying, well, no, there actually is a lobby for gun makers. It's called the National Shooting Sports Foundation. They represent gun makers. The NRA represents gun owners. But it's easier to de demonize the NRA if you say, oh, they're just that you know, greedy corporate people trying to sell guns, except that, yeah, not true. Even CNN now says that Kirsten Gillibrand is lying, that she is wrong. She says they fact-checked it. says Gillibrand is incorrect. The NRA is not largely funded by gun makers. And then they go on to quote, uh, let's see, Lars, Lars Dalside at uh, NRA. He says less than 5% of NRA's operating budget comes from the gun industry, including everyone from Bass Pro Shops to Billy's Gun Shop. Uh, basically, he says the money NRA raises for political purposes comes from donations that average less than $50 from everyday Americans from all across the country. So the donations to the NRA ILA average less than $50, so much for the big corporate money that they like to uh, talk about. And then there was this one, another presidential hopeful for the Democratic side, Kamala Harris. She says she owns gun for protection. Ooh. This is the old, I'm going to deflect the whole argument. She says, yes, I own a gun for probably the reason that a lot of people do, for personal safety. She says, but she still supports, quote, smart gun safety laws, such as universal background checks and a ban on assault weapons. This is the old, I own a gun, so don't think that I'm anti-gun just because I want to ban guns. What? How stupid do you think we are? You want to ban our guns. You want to take them away from the, the whole, no one wants to take your guns away. Well, we know that's not true anymore, don't we? When they're saying we need to go door to door and maybe even kick in the doors. And we're going to charge you with a felony if you don't turn them in. Including your magazines? Yeah, but no one wants to take your guns away, right? Yeah, you know what? We don't believe you, and never did. Well, let's keep it rolling. Talk about bears, bear guns. Everybody wants a bear gun. I don't care if you live in South Beach or I don't know where, Hawaii. Seems like everybody wants to bear. At least the inter interest is there. We find the subject fascinating. Barry's called in out of Anchorage, Alaska on 5. We're going to talk about a place where there are some real bears. Hey, Barry, you're on. Yes, well, when we were living down in Sitka, 
which is down there by the Capitol in southeast Alaska. Sure, sure. Uh, we had a Dan Wesson pistol pack, and my wife carried it with a four-inch barrel on it, on the gun. Mm-hmm. And I loaded up some uh, Remington 200-grain round-nose cast bullets that I found uh, uh, at a hardware store down there. Mm-hmm. And um, that's pre- uh, that's what she carried whenever we're out fishing and berry picking. Mm, okay. Now up here, um, forty years later, uh, she still gets just as target fixated uh, on uh, picking berries. And uh, I've kind of upgraded her to carrying. I think it's a, a Ruger Deer Slayer. It's their forty-four mag with the um, M- uh, Mini fourteen bolt. And hmm. I've got some 300, I think 325 grain uh, hard cast bullets from Ace. Perfect. And uh, and then she's got a back, and then I put a backpack sling on it so she can um, wander off um, gathering berries and forget where she's at and still have. Well, um, and you know the deal there. People say, well, you, know, you should have a long gun. Okay, yeah, I know. The problem is, if you have a long gun, if you haven't done what you did, and you're smart about this, people will then put down their shotgun or their rifle, then they will go pick berries or they go fishing, and then all of a sudden there's the bear, and oh yeah, my rifle or my shotgun is 100 yards up the trail where I left it. I love if it that you have this backpack down. down. What's that? If they remember where they put it down. <laughs> well, you know, I remember the Forest Service painting their uh, big rifles when they were out in the Tongass National Forest. They painted them a bright orange so they could find them exactly that reason yes i uh, no, i never saw them bright orange but i i fired uh one of those 375 h&h's mm-hmm. uh after it uh had its mandatory chop job right and they chopped the barrels lost, down yeah eight inches of barrel off of it and that was my frankly horrendous horrendous <laughs> Hideous. <laughs> and, you know, and look, I, I want to mention, Jim's asking, well, what about shotguns for bears? Uh, yes, but, frankly, uh, shotguns don't work real well on bears. Slugs don't penetrate nearly as well as people think they do. A rifle is better. Actually, I would offer even that a forty four Magnum with hardcast lead bullets is better than a shotgun. Just my take on it. But forget buckshot. That's going nowhere. That's not going to do you any good. Now, we used to take uh, state troopers out and see Alaska dogs. Mm-hmm. And they're handlers, and I'd always uh, break their action and unload the guns before they um, boarded our helicopter. Mm-hmm. And uh, they all had either um, uh, pump guns with slugs or uh, double barrel with slugs. But like, that was 40 years ago, and uh, things have uh, changed a bit. Yeah, we, we know more now. Look, Barry, thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's great range report, and I uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, you know what? A, a three fifty seven loaded with hard cast lead bullets. I would probably go with a Keith style bullet. Well, I would go with a Keith style bullet, not a round nose. It's going to do more damage. You're going to get the good penetration. Uh, but you got to be able to shoot it, and and also make sure you shoot it with the ammo you want to carry, and find out do you get bullet setback? Is it going to work for you? It's just same old deal, right? Making sure it works for you. Hey, I'm going to be out doing some shooting this week. We're going to be doing guns and gear. We get to try Springfield, Smith, uh, let's see, SIG, some other guns. I'll be reporting back in a week or so. So we'll be doing that. Go out and do some shooting this week. Oh, yeah, and if you'd like to be part of the after show, if you call me right now, I can get you in at 866-TALK-GUN. Do some shooting. Take some people with you. Have some fun. It is a lifetime sport that you can share with your family. 